So for this video, I'm going to talk about some basic concepts for combat with the staff. And I'm going to demonstrate a good training method for developing the proper instincts, not just for performing like a tau or a set pattern, for improvising in all kinds of combative situations. Just a hint, it's kind of like shadow boxing only with the staff, but I'm going to show you later. And if I remember to, because this is a single take, raw, unedited video. I'm also going to sh show just what I remember of the basic Tao learned when practicing Kung Fu. I, I still practice Kung Fu, but I mean, when I had my formal training back in the base. Anyways, so with the staff, you can fight from different distances because you have a lot of reach and you can really utilize your reach with thrusts and every time you strike you can slide it so if I'm striking this end I'm going to do this or if you're more close you can fight more like this block and stuff and if you really want to increase the distance then you can do something where in general I like to keep this kind of grip, both thumbs pointed forward. But if I turn my hand, it allows me to step back and extend the staff like this. And then I got the thumb pointing forward again when I'm most comfortable. All right, so let's see. So it's important to remember that this is not just the only weapon you got in combat. You also got your feet, you got your Headbutt, if it's in close, you've got everything along with the staff. The staff is just an extension of your body, pretty much. So if you want to combine, like let's say, strike with the staff with the roundhouse kick, one way would be to strike like this. And with this, you're going to use your, your hip. So you're going to strike with the hip. But then you're going to keep that rotation and pivot on the front foot position on your for the roundhouse kick. You could also, if you want to strike to one side and then kick to the opposite side to confuse the opponent, you can do something like this and then just use the hip movement from the retra retraction. So I'm going to pivot on my rear foot and use this to deliver the kick. So that's one way, like this, or this, and also that's this classic Kung Fu combination where you strike like this, again, a diagonal st strike, and as you retract, you deliver a front kick, and you deliver a second strike with the stand. So pretty much like this, so you can strike here, one strike, Two strikes, three strikes, four strikes. And you probably know this already if you've got some staff training, but that's also a basic pattern for striking where I'm going to strike each time with the rear end of the staff. And partially this is a good idea because it has more power, similar to a cross boxing, only with the staff because of the weight of the weapon, you've got a lot of speed, so it's not as slow, so you can do a lot of power strikes where you wouldn't see a boxer do something like four crosses in a row. Works a little better with the staff. So, for this combination, you're going to focus on the target, and you're just going to go um, downwards or upwards down, and from the side, from the side and for this remember you're always striking with the rear end now you can definitely use the front end of the staff as well it's a weapon first of all for thrusting but also if you want to either block or you just want to deflect the weapon and move in with the strike or if you want to deliver just something quick just as a Distraction, this doesn't have a lot of power, but it still stings and it can definitely distract the opponent, which allows you to hit with something which is a little bit of a bigger motion and something you'd like to mask. 
And another way to hide that spinning strike would be to use the spins. And these spins, they're not that practical, but they can serve to hide your intention. So if you're doing something like this, it becomes a little less clear. And also you can use spinning just for keeping the opponent at bay. Of course it requires a little bit of a, an open space like here, so you have uh, room to move, but in general that's the case with the staff. If you're in a limited space, you're probably just going to let go of this and just strike with your hands and feet or pick some other improvised weapon. If you are a real badass, perhaps you can break the staff in two and you can do some double stick stuff. Kick and then be ready to thrust. Now, this, I kind of like it, but it's not super practical. In terms of combat, it's more like when you watch combat sports or something and you see a guy like, like Conor McGregor or someone dropping their hands to try and bait the opponent. That's kind of what this is. So you look completely open and to a degree you are, but you're already, you're always ready to strike the other from this angle or from this opposite angle. That's part of holding it like this. But it's not something I would do too often. It's kind of a showbuilding approach. Also similar to with the katana, where you would keep some kind of guard which entices your opponent to strike towards the face of some kind of high target. Because then you know who's going to strike them and then you can react. So here you know your whole body is pretty much open. That also means if the opponent moves in, then you can time them, you can move out of the way, or something you can strike. So, or more kung fu like, like this. Now, for the spins, these are mostly useful for keeping the opponent at a distance and just as a we have conditioning the wrists as well. But also, you can use these kind of strikes to keep the opponent distracted and to distract from like a spinning strike like that. Like if you only do it this way, perhaps they've seen the motion. You can also do something like this. Well, the idea is that the rotation adds just a little bit of force, not that much. But it's fun to play around with these spins. For practical purposes, they're not the most useful, but they do have certain contexts where they're useful. If you have a, a lot of space and the opponent is at a distance, you can keep them away, for instance. And grab them, then so I would already mention, you can use it to bring the opponent down like this or manipulating the head to break the bounce. Or you can hook the opponent to keep them in control of not just for a knee strike, but also for something like going into a hip thrust or something. But a lot of times in grappling with the stick, I know this from sparring experience a lot of times, perhaps best to just let go of it. Just some shadow boxing with the staff, which is a way of using it to develop the instincts for combat. So you're not just practicing forms. And at the end of this video, I will show a form as well. A simple, basic one from when I was training Kung Fu formally at a court. But let's see, I'm just going to shadow box up it. So visualize the opponent. So if he's striking from this angle, perhaps I'll do something like this. Or if it's someone here, I'm going to strike, but if it's here, I might do something like this. Or 
So run from this angle. Keep the opponent that way. And always be mindful of the environment. I forgot about this chain completely. Anyways, that's enough of a shadow boxing demonstration. Remember, keep trying to visualize different situations like blocks ending up on the ground and how you're going to defend yourself from there. Any kind of situation you can imagine. Now, I'm just going to demonstrate this. Basic towel. Yeah, I think that was it. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. Let me know if you want to watch some more content. I got a whole spawning playlist full of weapon spawning with some examples of the staff. Pressure tested against different weapons. And in general, if you are into traditional martial arts or self-defense content or more combat sports stuff, I've a lot of different content. After years of free content, I need a helping hand from some of you. You can support me with $3 each month or 5 or 10 for a few extra benefits. Thanks for listening. Visit my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash sendragon.